Welcome to the summary of noise a flaw in human judgment. In March 2004, a series of bombs blasted in commuter trains killed 192 people and injured more than 2,000 people in Madrid. A fingerprint found on a plastic bag on the crime scene was transmitted via Interpol to all law enforcement agencies around the world. Days later, the FBI crime lab conclusively identified the fingerprint as belonging to Brandon Mayfield, an American citizen living in Oregon. Mayfield looked like a plausible suspect, a former officer in the US Army. He had married an Egyptian woman and converted to Islam. As a lawyer, he had represented a man charged with attempting to travel to Afghanistan to join the Taliban. He was already on the FBI's watch list. Mayfield was placed under heavy surveillance, his house bugged and searched, his phones were wiretapped. When this scrutiny failed to get any material information, FBI arrested him. But he was never formally charged. He had never left the country in a decade. While he was in custody, the Spanish investigators who had already informed the FBI that Mayfield is a negative match for the fingerprint on plastic bag, matched that print with another suspect. Similar to this story, last year, three police officers pressed George Floyd, a 46 years old man, to death just based on a 911 call from a convenience store after the store employee told the police officer that Mr. Floyd had bought a cigarette with a counterfeit $20 bill. Now, in these two stories, the errors were due to human judgment rather than any methodological or technological failure. Judgment is a broad word. For the sake of simplicity in this video, I will be using decision instead of judgment. We human beings take numerous decisions in our lives. Every decision we take is significantly influenced by invisible factors such as our mood, temperature, stress, fatigue, our past experiences and the amount of information that we have, etc. And these factors are named as noise by Daniel Kahneman and his colleagues. This book is mainly focused on systematic noise and professional decisions in big companies, NGOs and government bodies that cost them millions of dollars every year. But in this video, I'm sharing with you what noise means to you as an individual, how it impacts your daily life and three ways that you can reduce noise in your daily decisions. As individuals, we are working in different professions. If we are not working, we are dealing with these professions in our daily life. If you are a student, your teacher grades your essay which is very identical to your friend's essay as bad and the same teacher grades your friend's essay as good. If you are a patient, your doctor examines your health and decides what is the problem with your health and what medicine should you consume, whereas the same health problem is diagnosed differently by a different doctor. We and other people that we deal with are continuously taking these decisions that are not 100% accurate. All these decisions contain invisible noise and these decisions could cause you to fail in your class or could potentially cost you your health or even your life as it did to Floyd. The mood, stress, fatigue, the police officer's past experiences with black people, the misinformation on the media about racism, the temperature on the day and the amount of information that they received from the convenience store played their roles as noise in the police officer's decision to press him on the floor and to behave with him the way that they did. Noise is an unpredictable error that we cannot easily see or explain it. That is why we so often neglect it, even if it causes great damage for us. But the good news is that noise can be reduced. How? Let's learn that in the rest of the video. For us to learn how we can reduce the noise, first we have to learn two different kinds of decisions. Singular decisions and repetitive decisions. Decisions that are made only once, like buying a house, choosing a job, or proposing a marriage are singular decisions. They genuinely have unique features. But if you are buying a house for the fourth time in your life, you have probably started thinking of buying home as repetitive decision. Now noise is the difference in the decisions for the same problem, which happens in repetitive decisions. For example, if a doctor deals with the same kind of health problems, he will be taking repetitive decisions and the difference between his each decision or diagnose is the noise. That is why it is very difficult to detect noise in singular decisions as compared to repetitive decisions. For example, it is found that we obtain significantly different diagnoses from the same physician when they are presented twice with the same case. When wine experts in a major US wine competition tested the same wine twice, they scored only 18% of the wines identical. 
A forensic expert with just a few weeks apart can reach different conclusions when examining the same fingerprint twice. Experienced software consultants can offer markedly different estimates of the time completion of the same task on two different occasions. And similarly, a basketball player can never throw the ball in exactly the same way. We do not always produce identical decisions when faced with the same facts on two occasions. We can use this human nature in our advantage. In 1907, Francis Galton, a cousin of Darwin and a famous polymath, asked 787 villagers at a country fair to estimate the weight of a prize ox. None of the villagers guessed the actual weight of the ox, which was 1,198 pounds. Now it gets interesting here, when he calculated the average of their guesses, it was 1,200, just 2 pounds off the actual weight. This shows that the individual guesses of the villagers were far from the actual answer, but when he combined all the guesses and calculated their average, it was very close to the right answer. And in this case, the people are called wise crowd. We can implement the same strategy in our life as individuals. Here are three tips that can help you reduce noise in your repetitive decisions. If you have to make decision on a case, make several decisions on the same case. Give some intervals in between, your judgment can get better each time. The more times you judge, the more you can get closer to the right answer. You can do this either after some time has passed, giving yourself distance from your first opinion, or actively arguing against your first opinion to find a different perspective on the problem. Finally, unless you have strong reasons to put more weight on one of your estimates, your best bet is to average them. Tip number two, if you can get independent opinions from others, do it. This real wisdom of crowds is highly likely to improve your judgment. If you have to choose between opinions or advice from two different people and you don't know anything about their expertise or track record, follow the advice of the one who is thoughtful and open-minded rather than the smartest one. Because good decisions depend on what you know, how well you think, and how you think. It is found that general mental ability or GMA contributes significantly to the quality of performance and the occupations that require judgment. Tip number three, limit the amount of information that is fed to you. In any judgment, some information that is fed to you is relevant and some of them is not. More information is not always better, especially if it has the potential to bias your decision. Our current way of decision or judgment making is hardwired in our brain system. Unknowingly, we have been taking all these decisions which were full of noise such as our mood, stress, fatigue, temperature and the amount of information etc. And those decisions may have had negative consequences on us or on the people around us. Now that we are aware of noise in our judgment, we must leave important decisions for the time when we are in a good mood, less stressed, not tired, in a cool temperature room. And we must also consider how much information and what kind of information we have on the matter in hand. But remember, to fight noise, you first have to admit that it exists. Noise is an invisible enemy and preventing the assault of an invisible enemy can get us only an invisible victory. That is tedious and that could demotivate you because you are not achieving anything tangible or visible. Don't let that happen to you. Practice the tips that I shared with you as decision hygiene and you will see the improvement in your decision making in the long run. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will make sure to answer all of your questions to the best of my knowledge. See you in the next video. Bye.